Arrow, how are you? Doing good. How about you, man? Good, thank you. Is it just another rocking day for you, or how do you put put it all together? <laughs> well, first I get out of bed and <laughs> change my leather pants. The leather pants. And, uh... <laughs> it reminds me of one of the first conversations that I had with my wife because her, her uh, ex husband is a producer out what was out there in L A. and and I go you got to hang uh-huh. out with all those big name people they put on pants dude they put on pants the same way you yeah. do <laughs> <laughs> totally I run it it's funny because I run into a lot of them here like uh on kind of like off nights it's all flip flops and you know <laughs> so <laughs> hey man you get that new album coming man i i love the fact that it's only one word listen because i think that's the kind of yeah. a, it gets the attention and makes you go wow I, I you i i i need to listen right yeah that's i think that's pretty much the message that we're trying to uh you know put out there for everybody because there is it is hard getting people to actually just click and to listen, but there is so much on this album. We feel that uh, there's a lot of texture and depth and a lot of lyrical kind of stories that we're trying to put out there and messages. And uh, we, we really do hope people do listen and like what they are hearing. Well, you guys are on a mission and this, that's what I love about this and, and everything that you guys have always done is that you know, those, those albums of the seventies and eighties, those concept albums, when you guys had a concept, you go with it and, and, and you sell that idea. For instance, like hope, inclusion, escape, you deliver that through the music. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, I think that's uh kind of sets us apart in a way in this kind of like alternative modern uh, rock realm, you know? Um, I think a lot of what I'm hearing from a lot of people are, we don't sound like anything that's out there, which is really cool to me, you know? I mean, we're just doing what we love and that's playing music and we're so vast and diverse in everybody's backgrounds and what they do love and listen to on a regular and I think that's what's kind of working in our favor in that way. Well, I'll tell you the positive out of that. I'm a mobile entertainer, so I, I do high school dances to everything that's very much adult. And, and these high school kids are digging old rock from the from the 70s and 80s. And, and, and it's yeah. like, where are you guys finding this? TikTok? And so, I mean, the, the fact that you guys are coming out with this album, Listen, and with, with such you know diversity and things in it, I mean, you're, you're right in there with where those young adults are. Yeah. Absolutely. I actually have uh, a couple of teenage daughters and, uh, you know, and they listen, they actually listen to my album and they, they like what they're hearing, you know, and there's especially some that are more of their favorites than others. But I, I mean, I kind of felt like as a parent, I did what uh, I was supposed to and educate them on good music and <laughs> like vast, you know, their favorite band is Queen, you know, so. Uh, you can't go wrong with Freddie Mercury. You're absolutely. I got to yeah. give you a big compliment here, and that is the song "Closer." I I, I feel like that that you guys are the next U2. I mean, you 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 have that sound wow. about this song, and and it, it really. I mean, I, I sat there and listened to it at least five times in a row. I said I couldn't get enough of it. And was it because of the wow. length of the song? What what makes me keep going back to this song? <laughs> We're taking it back to like the early Beatles Elvis days where it's like a two minute song and you know, and, uh, I, I, first, I really want to thank you for that U2 compliment. Cause that's U2 is one of my favorites, oh, wow. especially Joshua tree era. Uh, you know, that, that whole time is just like perfect music for me. And I, I feel like Bono is a huge influence on me with his lyrics and kind of like the vulnerability that he does. He's a rock singer. Yeah. Yeah. You you can't take that away from him. So, um, yeah, I think he kind of hit the nail on the head with that, uh, closer. It kind of captures that urgency and that, that kind of like ambient, uh, kind of like urgency, uh, guitar landscape that's there. And, uh, it's short and sweet, you know, and that's, I think a lot of songs should be. Well, I I wasn't done with it when when it uh, when it when it first finished. I'm going, no, it's not done yet. Wait, what? What? Whoa, hold on, hold on, do it again, do it again. And and to me, that reminds me of my yeah. childhood because that's what I used to do with my 45s. That's awesome. I think the song's going to be a crossover hit, dude. I think it's going to go right into adult top 40 as well as new rock. Awesome. I I really hope so. I think that um, you know this album has something for everybody. You mm-hmm. know, and um, uh, and. It is a you know less than thirty five minutes long for the eleven songs. Too. Really? So that's uh, yeah. So we kept it short intentionally. 
wow, that's a quick trip to the mall. And then when you get back in the car, do it again. Exactly. It, that, I think it kind of leaves people wanting more, you know. I know that if I hear, unless it's Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> I'm like ready to, <laughs> I'm ready to skip to the next song. So, <laughs> What is it about that song? Sometimes I'm in the mood for it. Other times it's like, no, get out now, now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because uh, Stacey David Blades, our guitarist, we have this talk and he's like, he loves Queen, but something about that song, he's like, I can't listen to that song anymore. <laughs> Where I, it's never like, I love it all the time. It's just that song, you know? So <laughs> That's the way I am with Stairway to Heaven, man. Once that thing starts, it's like, okay, I'm not oh, doing yeah. anything. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, you can actually just go into Guitar Center and hear everybody play that song, too. <laughs> that and Smoke on the Water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, what's really interesting about the, the, you know, when you start diving into the story of this album is that so many times it's lopsided in the way that it's one or two members of the band that put it together. But you guys were very open to bring your own inspirations and, and your, you know, everything that you've ever learned in the music industry together on this. This is a band project. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And there's, you know, everybody's a songwriter in this band, you know, and so everybody contributed. And uh, I just want to thank everybody that's, uh, you know, all my bandmates that allow me to be who I am, because I feel like in previous bands and projects that I've been in, I've had to be kind of like one sided, you know, and I couldn't explore you know certain melodies or stylings that I would love to do. And uh, my band, you know, it just totally allows me to be me and I uh and we all do for everybody like in the band and that's I think that's why it works the way it does and why we write what we have written so far how do you how do you sell that idea to Mike because I mean you know what Mike with his history and everything I mean you go in there and you say okay we have this idea we'll listen to what you have to say or does he say all right you guys give me what you got and whoa you've got a lot this is going to be great yeah yeah, so Mike definitely, um, you know, his discography and who he's worked with is just like, I mean, 150 million plus albums <laughs> uh, he's worked on, you know? And uh, so, of course, we go into that room with him and consider and listen to everything that he has to say. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, everybody's mission is about the song. It's always just about the song. What makes the song better, mm -hmm. you know? So we, we tried several different ideas and if it worked, it worked. And if it didn't, it didn't. And, um, I think, uh, the songs itself spoke to Mike and why he was so passionate about this album and, uh, this band and songs is because he thought they were really, really, really good songs, yeah. you know? And, to me, that was like one of the hugest compliments. You know, here's a guy who works with Metallica, the cult, who's like one of my favorites of all time. Um, you know, Shania Twain, uh, brother in law is Bob Rock. He sat on numerous amazing sessions and he loves our stuff. And that is like a huge compliment. How do you get through that office door? What do you send flowers and chocolates? I mean, what, what happens there? <laughs> <laughs> so he actually was working with uh he he's a las vegas native and he was working with uh stacy on a previous project and right before we went into covid we started um with a few demos that we had uh one of them was death on holiday which is on the album that was probably one of the very first songs and then we went to covid and started sending him the newer stuff that we were writing, mm -hmm. uh, which would have been breathe and disco kills. And he was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So we, we hooked him and, uh, he diligently worked on it for, I mean, at, at some point we had to say, all right, Mike, we're done. We're yeah. good. I mean, it can't get any, he was so like, he's a perfectionist. So yeah. you had to be like, all right, that's great. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, a song like 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 Closer, I think you really hit it on the head when you when you said that, that it's a powerful song because that seems to be what's missing from the radio world in the way that it, the, the artists that are on there are the ones that are getting a lot of social media hits. They're the ones with the following. Oh, we got to play this one because the following says we have to do this so that we can get those listeners right. there. And what you, so where is the real music? It's sitting right here. You, you've got it. It's called right. Closer. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's um, 
and it's hard because the the music business is so different from you know how it was even 10 years ago now it's all about how many likes do you have yep. or how many Spotify listeners? And, and a lot of that stuff is, you know, pay to play. Now, like payola is a thing now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to like break uh, as a new band. And I think we're kind of building some traction and momentum and it's, um, you know, we're just kind of growing and, there used to be a game that when when the record rep would come to the radio station, and I know I broke the rules, and I know I pissed off a lot of record reps, but when they would come in there with these songs, man, I got this exclusive song, man, nobody has ever heard it yet, and I would put it on the machine, and it would record it, and all of a sudden I'm going, God, we have this song now. Oh, my God. But but yeah. see, that to me was part of the game, because in all honesty, I was there for the artist. I was there to get, get it right. on there so people can start talking about it. Right. Right. And that's, uh, I think that is so important right now and why we actually want to get on the road and play in front of people. Because if you, honestly, Arrow, if you like this album, wait till you see us live. I mean, <laughs> no, I see a piece of yeah. that in the video, dude. I, in fact, that's one of the things yeah. I was going to bring up here. This is the band I want to see that's being featured in this video. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that is it. And, and even more. And the funny thing about that video was, I could barely move because he, uh, the director, slicked the uh, pavement with water, and I was wearing leather-soled <laughs> boots, and I was sliding everywhere. <laughs> so I had to like power stance and like just use my upper body momentum. So, yeah, imagine that times a hundred. So that's what we're like, love. <laughs> is is there something in the planning stages, or what are you guys doing on that? Yeah, so we have a couple of shows coming up. First is a uh, album release show here in Vegas, June 28th, and it's following a super secret show. I'm not allowed to disclose <laughs> who, but uh, we are going on directly following that, and yeah. it's going to be kind of like an event. We're going to have a little bit more of a mer an immersive experience. Uh, a couple of artists are coming in and displaying their art and having some limited prints, and there's going to be food trucks and hopefully some tattoos and kind of like a little, little mini festival here yeah. in uh, Vegas. Um, and it's going to be a really awesome night. And then we got a couple shows on the books after that, but our real focus is trying to book that tour and get on, get on something where we can support somebody and really get out there and in front of many, as many people as we can. So what can fans do to help out? Because you know, darn good and well, if, if they had the muscle, they would, they would, they would share it. Right. So I, First is like follow us on everything yeah. at Crashing Wayward on all the social platforms. Um, add us to all your Spotify, Apple, and and just share it as much as you can. That's really kind of like really all we can kind of do at this moment is just share and talk. It's kind of like that grassroots, and we're kind of like in that grassroots building stage for this band, you know. And and we really kind of only scratch the surface worldwide and i you know we're breaking nationally and kind of want to get across the seas and everything and just um so that's all we can really do is just share it and tell everybody uh, that you can you know whether you love us or hate us tell a friend <laughs> hey some big news happened uh, just a couple of days ago when it comes to the world of music and and this is a, a subject that i've talked about a lot on iHeartRadio, and that is ai's now paul mccartney has yeah. come out and said that the final beatles song with john lennon because of ai's will happen do you find that to be very scary i find anything ai to be very scary <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um yeah and i think that uh, it's tough because I love the, the analog of someone's talent, you know, and um, and that everybody's voice is a fingerprint, you know, and can be their own unique entity. Uh, so I'm I'm very scared of that whole AI thing. It's like we already have a lot of that right now, yeah. and you know, in music, anyways. But now it's like you're kind of like if you want a painting. Or if you want a story or a video, you can just speak into some whatever AI program and there you go. And um, I think it's a scary thing. And I know it's new and exciting and this and that, but it's kind of like the hologram. So I'm not going to go see Michael Jackson hologram. Right. I'd rather have seen the real Michael Jackson, you know. Yeah. Um, so it just doesn't do it. for Personally, for me, it doesn't do it at all. It, and it does scare me. And 
Uh, I hope you are scared of it, too. <laughs> I am. I am. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, as a creative person, how are you protecting your riffs, your vocals, your ideas? Because, I mean, if, if, if somebody taps into your sound, all of a sudden, woof, they can take it right away from you. I mean, they're going to have to develop some new copyright laws, are they not? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I know that some artists feel that art doesn't belong to any, anybody. I get but, it. You know, if I, if I make a living doing it, then how can I make a living... Why would, you know, I know I create what I create and I, you know, I also write and I paint as well, but I create because I, I love it passionately. And, but if it allows me not to work a nine to five because I'm able to sell it, then, you know, uh, people should own their art. So you, and, you actually put paint on a canvas? I do. Dude, yeah. dude, that's how I got into a conversation with Paul Stanley of Kiss. I went up to him and I said, you scrape your canvas. And he goes, what are you talking about? And, and because I'm also an artist, and I, and I was talking to him about the technique. And, and it was, but that got, that got me a 30-minute conversation in an art gallery. Oh, cool. And so, so I, mean, awesome. I, I, mean, the, I mean, that, you talk about a conversation starter. I'd love to go into your artwork and just look at it, stare at it, and study your style. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I'm an interesting kind of person in the way I do five things in one style and then I get bored yep. and I'm like looking for something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and I, you know, and that's another thing I kind of keep it under wraps right now. I'm yeah. not like brave enough, you know, but I mean, I dig it. I, I, I created to leave something for my kids and that's kind of like how I feel about music. I, I, I hope to leave, something for them when I'm no longer here that they can turn on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, whatever exists. And there I am whenever they want to hear me, you know? God. So, well, you've got the gift for it. That's the thing about it. And you've also got the keys to the future. I always call that dear future reader or dear future listener. This was done for you. Right. Yes, exactly. And, and, and it's like, and, and cause you had to trust yourself in order to do it. And you had to believe in that art as well. Right. Dang. Absolutely. Dang. What a creative mind. I love talking with creative people because they, they, they get it. They get that it's just moving right through them. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I had previous uh, talk I had, and I truly feel like the songs that, uh, some of the songs that I've written, I, like, I get it. I get that these are not mine. I'm not like God bless me you are this <laughs> and you will do that <laughs> and i feel like this energy artistic energy as much as can sound cliche it runs me and it's i'm just the vessel in which it goes through that's right that's right you know wow uh, so so it's like uh i get emotional over some of these songs that i'm listening like wow i wrote that Outer body experience yeah do you keep the the lyrics uh, wrapped up in a journal log or anything like that to where you can go back to it three to five years later and still still feel and wonder okay why did i go with this this particular word or this phrase i could have gone with this one what where did i fall out of love with this particular you know set of verses right yeah totally that's kind of and and I drive myself crazy with uh, lyrics as well, too. Yep. I'm like a stickler on trying not to repeat a certain word that yeah. I already said in another song. So, <laughs> Man, that's yeah, that's the stuff that you didn't find on the album cover. They, it, but, but yet, man, when you get to no. talk about it, it makes it even more deeper. Yeah. And my wife had no idea who she was marrying me until I started writing songs. I'm like locked away. <laughs> so where can listeners go to find out more about the band, the music, as as well as the, your journey? Because I want them to give you guys a lot of love. And I'm sure you've got some merchandise for them as well. Yeah. So we're actually, we're going to, um, speaking merchandise at our uh, album release show, we're going to be having uh, some new merchandise, new t-shirts, hats, and some other special uh, collectibles and such but uh crashingwayward.com you can find out everything uh merchandise upcoming shows where to stream the music and of course uh, we do have physical product through crashingwayward.com and also rfkmedia.com uh, we're going to come out with a vinyl right now we do have uh cds uh, which are really cool and beautifully packaged um, all our socials at Crashing Wayward, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and of course, wherever you stream music, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube, it's it's everywhere. Wow. Wow. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open yeah. for you. 
Awesome. It was super good talking with you, and I appreciate you having me on. You'd be brilliant today, okay? Yeah, you too.